Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. Pretty excited today. I've got actor Martin Copping with me. So welcome, Martin. Thank you very much. It's it's good to be here. So is is Martin is Martin what you go by, or is that just what like your your family calls you? Uh, no, I generally uh, family and friends call me Marty or Marts. Um, but for for work and you know business and people that I you know just more meet, usually it's it, it's Martin. It's 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 my professional name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because normally I'll go by Mike. But now if I'm at home, it, well, if I'm at home and not in trouble, Mike, yeah, I'm in trouble. Exactly. Mike. Michael. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I used, I used to get the, uh, the stomping of the foot when I do something bad from my mom, Martin. And she, she's, and I'd just laugh at her and then she'd burst out laughing. <laughs> but she'd try, she'd try, you know. <laughs> or I might get my full name, you know, the, the whole thing, middle name. Oh, and you get the, you get the yeah. whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, Martin, thank you so much for uh, for doing this. So excited to talk to you. My uh, that's that's my pleasure. son, my son that does uh, does the podcast with me. He does everything, the hard stuff. He does all the stuff behind the scenes, the editing and the stuff. He's been wearing me out. He's so excited that uh, that you were coming on the show. He's been playing the yeah. game. <laughs> oh, fantastic! So, that's so, great. So, my game related questions coming from him. I'm relying okay. on him not to steer me wrong with ridiculous questions. I'm, now I'm sure he knows exactly what he's what he's talking about. <laughs> well, so so Martin, let's let's start here. Um, talk a little bit about you know what made you want to get into the entertainment business. How did you go about that? Um, I well, I think from a very young age, I I wanted to you know work in in film, in particular film. Um, I grew up in the industry. My dad was a cinematographer and a producer and a director. Um, nice. But, you know, his, his passion was cinematography and he made, he made quite a few films back in the uh, late 60s, 70s and 80s, uh, which were part of the Ausploitation era. And so I grew up, I guess, around the industry and, um, and grew up watching movies and uh, there was, I remember a few pivotal moments when I was younger. One was watching Star Wars, um, you know, and th there's a scene where uh, Luke and, and Han and I think Chewie and Leia are fighting off, uh, fighting, they're, they're fighting the enemies in the Death, Death Star and they shoot a hole in the floor and they got to jump in and this little water snake tries to eat Luke and, Han shoots it and then the walls start closing in and then they've got to use these poles to keep it open. And then uh, R2-D2 ends up having to like hack the computer system to get, and I remember watching this whole thing and it was just this nonstop, you know, uh, set of problems that, that came at them and, but it wrapped in such a wild adventure and they were all dressed up in, you know, they're in space. And I, I remember looking at, I didn't know what they were doing at the time that it was performance and that it was acting. But I, I recognized that level of adventure and, you know, that I, I just knew, I go, I don't know what this is. This is what I want to be doing for the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was laying down on the floor in the living room, just staring at a box. Um, but, but yeah, but I, I just, I remember from, from that young, you know, I would have been three or four years old, knowing that that's, that's what I wanted to do. And, um, and I've sort of done it ever since, you know, I did commercials when I was younger, when I was at school. Um, my mum and dad didn't really want me to be pursuing it professionally at that point. They didn't want me doing TV shows. They just said, look, you know, if you want to do this when you get older, you're absolutely welcome to, but we want you to have a normal childhood. I think I'd seen too many horror stories in Hollywood of people getting messed yeah. up. And, right. um, you know what? I reckon they were probably onto something. I think if I'd done it soon, <laughs> I, could, I could have been a liability to myself, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I like the fact that you obviously grew up in the '80s. I did as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. one. That was such a wonderful time for for cinema and and movies. Lots of good things to inspire you at that time. I think. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, you've got some of my favorite uh, images behind you. Yeah, Arnold, some Rambo in there. It's yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so if I was better at the uh, at Photoshop, when I when I had people, you know, guests on the show, I would stick them in back there. That's that's the oh, next nice. level I'm trying to get to. You know, get yeah, nice. <laughs> get, get everybody in there screaming uh, con when they come on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's great. But it was, you're no, right, it was. It was an ama amazing era. And I think that that really molded a lot of who I am today with the movies that I watched in the 80s. Did you, um, did you do any acting through, um, through like high school or through as you were, as you're growing up? Did you do like theater or anything like that? Yeah, I did. I remember I would have been 11, I think. And I used to play uh, like competition cricket and I really, oh really enjoyed it. And I was, I was pretty good at it. I, would, I don't think I ever would have been good enough to turn professional, but I was very passionate about it. But I remember one day when I was, I think it was 11 or 12 and uh, I'd finished cricket and dad came up and said, look, you know, we need to have a chat. Um, you're old enough to go to drama school now if you want to. But the only problem is, you know, it would conflict with cricket. So you're going to have to choose one or the other. And at, at the school that I was at, everyone was into footy and cricket, Australian rules, football yeah. and cricket. Um, you know, none of my mates were going to drama school. It just, it didn't happen. <laughs> and I was really torn because I hadn't actually done acting classes before. Um, but, I, you know, I guess there was just, it was something I always knew I wanted to do, but I knew cricket and I loved cricket and my friends played cricket and it was a big social thing. And dad said, you're going to have to make a choice. And I really, I was really torn. I didn't know what to do. And I remember asking him, you know, what do you, what do you think? What do you think I should do? And he said, well, you, you need to make the decision, but I'll just say one thing. I don't think you're ever going to be a professional cricketer. But I 100% think you could be a movie star. <laughs> and I went, yeah. let's do drama school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's some good parenting there. It was. Oh, he's an amazing <laughs> parent. He's an amazing parent. I actually, I actually went and saw him yesterday. I haven't seen him since February because I had to leave Australia to go back and do COD. And he's gotten so old. He can only do little <laughs> steps now. They're like one inch at a time. And he uses a little, you know, those little frames with wheels on them. Oh yeah, it's adorable. Oh, <laughs> he's just—he's the sweetest. Yeah, oh, like getting terrific. from one room to the other, getting from one room to the other, I—I I would say was more challenging, and for me to get from America to Sydney to Melbourne during COVID, <laughs> it was more challenging for him to get one room to another. <laughs> uh, you know, he's not going to be happy with yeah, you when so, you listen to this. No, I know, I know, I know. But no, so yeah, in answer to your question, I, I, I did do, I did do study and I, I did commercial work. I used to get pulled out of school. Um, as I mentioned, you know, dad was a commercial cinematographer and producer yeah. and um, he'd often, you know, have to cast kids in his commercials and very frequently they wouldn't be able to do the job. They'd get on set, nerves would get to them, they'd freeze or they just wouldn't be able to do, you know, what, what the director needed. And, um, and so I'd constantly get, you know, at least a couple of times a year, I'd have dad's secretary show up at the school and uh, pull me out in the middle of a class and say, you know, you've got to, I'm just going to turn the car on. I don't want to drain the battery on the phone. Um, so uh, we need you on set and they'd take me to set and I'd run on and, you know, I never found it challenging. I grew up with one of dad's cameras stuck in my face 24 seven. So um, yeah, to, the do the parts and. Like, like when the they had somebody have trouble, they grab you. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, That's pretty good. So, yeah, I did, I did perform, and then I, I did plays, theatre, and obviously in drama school. Um, we were always doing plays, and um, yeah, it's good. It was good. And then I tried to do yeah. it seriously, and it's a lot harder than I ever could have imagined in terms <laughs> of getting work and getting getting a career happening. <laughs> but we got there. It's so yeah. much easier when when your dad's just grabbing you for commercials. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Pay was all right. Have too. you have you have you gotten the chance to play a cricket player on screen yet? You know what? No, I haven't. I I used to so I played competition uh, cricket, tennis, and basketball. I have, in a funny kind of a way, played tennis. 
interestingly enough, the first job that I booked when I got to America in, I think, 2009 or something, was yeah. a commercial for Rexona, which was, uh, it's, it's an Australian deodorant. And I was playing, uh, it was like, it was supposed to be like a Nintendo Wii, but it was a made up console. <laughs> and I was playing tennis. And through the computer, I was playing against Steffi Graf. So I did it. My first job was doing a, uh, a commercial playing tennis against Steffi Graf. Well, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, so that was, that was pretty, pretty awesome. cool, you know. Uh, but cricket, no. no. Yeah. Yeah, we got to make that happen. I think so. I think it would be great. <laughs> so I, I saw that you had done a, a Oh, wait, wait. I'm going inter to interrupt you because yeah, yeah, I do on. have a funny story. So, yeah. you know, it's like it's always a bit nerve-wracking going through airports at the moment in, in COVID land. Yes. Anyway, when I landed in Sydney – a an Indian there was an Indian uh guy and he was like the security dude he said excuse me sir uh as all my bags were going through security can you please bring your bags over to the area where they swab them for like drugs or bombs or something I'm like <laughs> yeah sure you know it's not the first time I was dressed you know like a hip-hop artist at the time and uh so I took the bags over and he kept looking he kept staring at me kind of funny and he's really friendly and, um, and he, he's swabbing my bags. And he, I said, what, what are you swabbing them for? And he goes, bomb, sir. <laughs> and I went, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but he, keep, but he, he keeps like looking at me, kind of accusatory, but with this big smile on his face. What the? What are you? And then he goes, excuse me, sir. Um, are you a professional cricketer? You look like a professional cricketer. I just can't put my mind on it. And I'm thinking to myself, but I had the mask on, so he couldn't see my full face. But I'm thinking to myself, I bet he plays Call of Duty. <laughs> and he's been playing me, and he just can't put his finger on it. But deep that's down, hilarious. he wants me to be a cricketer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's as close as I've come to being a professional cricketer. Yeah, that's pretty great. And you're probably right. It's, he's probably played the video game. It just it, His mind wasn't getting wrapped around it. I reckon, I reckon, I reckon. That's pretty terrific. Yeah. So, so I was going to ask – I saw that you uh, had a uh, had a movie coming out where you had done the directing on it, and my question yeah. was, did you did you kind of get that um, the skills needed for directing from your father and watching him work uh, as you were growing up? Um, not not directing, no, but I I, I would say I picked up a large part of my filmmaking skills from working with yep. dad. I also, I crewed on his sets for a long time, you know, to, to get pocket money. Um, yeah. I'd work as a, as a runner. So I'd be driving people around as a PA, getting people coffees. I really worked my way from the ground up for quite a few years, for years, really all, all through, I'd say the first 15 years of my acting career. Um, I, I worked crew, you know, assistant crew, assistant, assistant gaffer, camera assistant, um, I did pretty much everything and it, I didn't like it. Um, I loved being on set, but I really, I didn't, I didn't like being, the, you know, the shit. You want to be in front of the camera. Um, I want to be, yeah. I mean, look, I like being behind the camera, but you know, in a creative role. Um, right. but I think it was incredibly good for me. Um, it, it taught me so much, um, about how film sets work. And I think my case in particular, I worked on a lot of skeleton crews, um, which for your listeners that don't know, that's when you work with a very, very small crew, you cut out all the fat, you don't have any fancy um, or unnecessary crew members there. Not that there's ever really an unnecessary, we always need more crew, but um, you know, you might just have a, a, a DP, um, director of photography, a, a sound guy, um, maybe someone who does a little bit of lighting um, and the performers, you know, and a director, unless the director is the camera guy. So I really, I learned to sort of run and gun on shoots and, and move fast and um, make the most of what you've got, which is, you know, kind of how I was able to make the, the film that you're talking about, the dunes for, um, for the budget that I made it on, which was very, 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 very low. 
<laughs> we also run on a skeleton crew with the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, I think that's the beauty of of uh, the digital age is, you know, I mean, I look at what I did on the film and what other filmmakers have done. You know, there's a director called Sean uh, Baker who made a I don't know if you ever saw Tangerine, but he shot it on iPhone. It was one of the first Ooh, films to yeah. get shot on, shot on iPhone fives and uh, and it screened at Sundance and it was fantastic, you know. Um, so it's I think we're in a very fortunate position. I do think it's still easy to get caught into the trap of blowing out budgets when doing independent films. Um, but the actual cost, if you're, you know, if you're really creative, the cost of making something, you can keep it incredibly low, which opens it up to pretty much anyone. You know, I guess your, your talent and your passion and your dedication are really your main limitations. Yeah, it's kind of an amazing time because in the past, much more difficult, I think, to get um, to get your creativity out there, you know, and, and you, you almost yeah. had to have backing to get anything done. And that's not necessarily the case anymore. I mean, you can even, uh, if you're lucky, get funding to kind of back some of those smaller projects and, and shoot it mainly by yourself. It's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of amazing. It is, yeah, you know, especially with things like, you know, crowdsourcing uh, platforms like Kickstarter yeah. and GoFundMe and Indiegogo. You, you, you can't, if you push hard enough, you can, you know, you can finance your own film. It's hard. I've done it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's, do it. it's yeah, doable. Yeah. And, you know. So, so the, the, um, the movie, The Dunes, you actually wrote the script as well? Yeah, yeah. I wrote it and directed it, uh, produced it performed in it uh ran a lot, a lot of, of hats, production on it. that's a lot of hats still it's a lot it's too many but you know i would do it again <laughs> well it had to be kind of fulfilling uh, because that's something that's that's your own creation and that you're kind of bringing to life so that that had to be a good feeling once that was completed yeah it look it really is i think it was it took me five years to finish it um because wow. i was determined to not have to keep constantly go out and get more finance and um it, when i finally i saw it it screened at a naples international film festival in a cineplex there and so i finally got to see it on a big screen and it was emotional i, I you know i was really for the for the problems that i had throughout post-production um i was just blown away by where it's at you know i was so happy we just we actually just won another uh, best narrative international feature at Jersey Shore yesterday. It's doing it's doing very well on the festival circuit, which is great. I think that's a, a telling sign. Uh, when I started running festivals, you know, you, you, your insecurity kicks in. You're like, oh shit, I'm yeah. going to get into a festival. But we have, and we've won a lot of awards, and uh, I'm that's really, yeah. I'm really grateful. Has your dad got well. to see it yet? All right, Martin. Martin has froze up on us for just a second, but he'll be back. We're getting ready to uh, talk about Call of Duty Vanguard, which I know a lot of you are anxious to hear about. As am I. I I told you my son Brett has just been blowing me up, trying to uh, uh, fill me up with questions for uh, for Martin. So we'll get uh, right to that in just a moment. All right, so Martin is back. So go ahead, Martin. I'm back. We had a phone overheating situation, but, uh, <laughs> a lot of air conditioning and creating some shade cloth has fixed it. Um, yeah, my dad, he has seen it. Uh, he has quite severe uh, and advanced dementia. And I could, I think I could see the writing on the wall. So um, sure. when I was sort of mid post production, um, I realized he, it was probably the last chance I'd get to show him um, while he was still able to sort of understand what was going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I, so I did. So he, he saw an early cut of it, which was great. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's terrific. I have to say, if you've been sitting in the heat all of this time, you're handling it really well. That must be the professional in you. No sweat. Now, well, the funny thing is, it's not like, that hot 
I, but, but what I was doing, I think I was holding my phone out directly under the uh, yeah. front window of the car. So That's all the heat was mistake. magnified on it. But yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't hitting me. So anyway, yeah, the, the rookies learned from the master and now. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. So let's, uh, let's talk about Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard. That, it's a game that has Vanguard? just come out. What's yep. that? Yep. Oh, yep. Just agreeing with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're you're playing Lucas Riggs, which my son says that's the best character on the game. I would agree. <laughs> yeah. He said, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you something funny. He told me to to make sure to to tell you this. He said that every time he gets shot, your character says, I'm effing pinned. He says it's driving him crazy because I guess he's getting shot a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that does happen in the multiplayer. Um, I've only played multiplayer a couple of times. You know, I played the I played the campaign. I just finished playing the campaign. Um, but yeah, in the multiplayer, it's he he swears a lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so and so that, tell me a little me, bit obviously. about the game. Well, so there are, there are different modes to the game. You have your campaign, which is the story mode, um, which is I guess where a lot of uh, my work is really displayed. Um, yeah. It's a, a st- essentially the story of uh, the creation of this elite uh, team of soldiers from all, from all over the world uh, who band together in World War II to fight against um, Freisinger, who's, you know, the enemy, uh, right. the German enemy. And, um, yeah, we, we have a full, a full cinematic in there, uh, which is story-driven, which... It's a story that I really love. I think it's incredibly well written. And um, as I said, I just streamed the campaign and had such a great time. Um, then you have the multiplayer, which uh, is basically, yep, there are different modes to it. But, you know, you're just a group of online players running around blowing the shit out of each other. Um, <laughs> and it's it's fast paced and, it, and it's heaps of fun. I'm, I'm still... I'm good enough now that I can sort of hold my own in multiplayer, but um, I definitely need more practice. Um, and that the game itself, you know, has other modes. There are other components. Uh, there's a, a zombies mode, um, which is really popular. Well, yeah, I was community. going to ask you if there was a zombies mode in this one. Yeah, so there's, I think there's a, I mean, I haven't played it, but I think there's a zombies mode in it. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is, which I want to play. And uh, then... Yeah, COD also has a, a big battle royale called Warzone, which I've been playing a lot. I actually yeah. stream that on Twitch. I have a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, no, it's. It, I think it's, I, I really like the new one. I'm, you know, as I said, I've just done the campaign and um, I'm having a ball, but I do need to play more multiplayer. I played Champion Hill, which is one of the multiplayer modes. And it's fast and, the, you know, the people who play it are sweaty and I just, it's, <laughs> It's it's a it's a lot it's a lot. <laughs> I've been enjoying watching you on your your Twitch channel because oh, you're, you're just very open. It, whether it's good or bad, you're you're just very yeah. open about it, and and the reactions like the reactions that you have real time hilarious. Oh, cool. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I got told because I never really understood Twitch when I started streaming, and um, but the people that followed me on TikTok and Instagram they convinced me to do it. And then I realized how bad I was. I started streaming uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which is another game that I worked on. Uh, great game. And, but I was so bad. And I would say, well, why do you watch me? I don't understand. I'm terrible at this. And they said, oh, no, no, we don't watch you for your gameplay. We watch you for the memes. And I did, at the time, I didn't know what that means. Now I get it. They watched so they could laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. When, when yeah. Call of Duty was just coming out and it was only available, it's been years ago, it was only available on a computer. And my, yeah. my brother convinced me to, it was multiplayer, but you had to do it on computer. He convinced me to try to play. And I never got, you know, wherever I spawned, I never left that spot. I was, <laughs> I was dying just instantly. Right. It was terrible. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. You know, and, and it's amazing how good those really skilled gamers are playing these games. I mean, you have, if you're new 
and you're playing one of those guys, you have no chance. You've got no chance. Like, they like, they just toy with you. That's it. It's awesome. I mean, it's they used to do it to me in, in, Yeah, yeah, they used to do it to me in Siege all the time when I started playing. You'd be standing in a house, and they'd just run past you and then run up, shoot you in the foot, and run off. And then they'd come up behind you and stab you or something. It's just te- it's demoralizing. <laughs> but I persevered, and now, now you know, they pull that stuff on me, and I, I pop one straight between the eyes. <laughs> well, Rainbow Six Siege, another excellent game. And that game and this game both, it's it's very cinematic. I mean, it's it's almost like yeah. you're watching a, a, a good uh, movie. Yeah, that's that's. That's absolutely right. We we actually did an, um, uh, a cinematic for Siege, which we it was it was the first time I worked on the volume, which is like the performance capture stage, yeah. and um, it was so much fun, you know, and that that gave me a good introduction, I think, to doing PCAP, um, performance capture, and you know, then when did you get to wear the I suit, started working on Vanguard. <clears throat> oh yeah, did you get yeah, yeah, yeah the, the suit with the little. In there. Yeah, headgear with <clears throat> with the cameras. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, they are, that's pretty great. Yeah, they are. They both they both have really some cinematic components to them. So, so if I understand, Riggs, his teammates, some of them get captured, and then Riggs has to go well either avenge them or rescue them. Is that part of it? Well, it's it's spoilers, so for anyone that's listening, block your ears. But essentially, they our whole squad gets captured. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. And we 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 end up getting interrogated, and um, I don't want to give too much away for people that, that haven't played the campaign yet. But yeah, we no we let have to let the silly and... podcaster give it away. That's it. I'll, I'll have to go back. You can and give it away. Spoilers. <laughs> All right, you can give it you can give it away then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, essentially, and uh, R- R- Riggs does have a one particular uh, – well, he's got a lot of heroic scenes, but one in particular, which is just fantastic, and I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, he is, he is, he is a sort of he's – a, he's a little bit of a hero. Let's, let's call him what he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm assuming my son is probably his next biggest fan. He's a big fan. He said, Riggs, because he was a big um, uh, Frank Woods guy okay. you know, from the earlier yeah. game. And we were, we were lucky yeah. enough to get to, to speak to the gentleman that played uh, 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 Woods, which was great. But then once he started yeah. playing yeah. Riggs, now, now it's Riggs. I put, um, that is like music to my ears. <laughs> yeah. So you're in good shape, at least until another game comes. Exactly. Yeah, I got to. What is it? Late next. Late next year. I've got. I've got one. One fan. One fan confirmed. Well, that's right. <laughs> so okay. So let me ask you some of the questions that that he gave me because I'm assuming Please. other gamers will want to know. So here we go. So yep. his first question, he said, "This game is a little bit shorter than some of the other ones." He was curious if that was. Uh, due to COVID? That I couldn't tell you. Um, a few people have mentioned that the campaign was uh, a shorter campaign. Um, I don't actually I don't actually yeah. know, to be honest. Um, I mean, maybe you I, just you know, finished I, the I, story. I, yeah, I, I just... Uh, I, I do know that we were really pushed to, to you know, to hit our deadline. Um, yeah due to, you know, COVID and the restrictions, um, the team of Sledgehammer did an amazing job just, you know, keeping it. Yeah. I, I, productions were getting shot, shut down all over the place because, you know, there'd be infections. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it, we, did, we didn't experience it on set with this one. Um, so, yeah, not, not 100% sure, but I know that, it, yeah, COVID did cause a lot of limitations in a lot of areas. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So has or does, do you know, if Sledgehammer has any um, designs on teaming up with their other World War II game from Call of Duty? I'd, no, I'd, I don't. I don't. I, I would, it would be great, though. If I, I, I want to come back. I want to do it. Well, that was, yeah, that's kind of, is kind of what I'm asking. Is, are we going to get a sequel to this? Will we see you as Riggs again? I, 
I honestly can't tell you because the I don't find out that stuff. Um, yeah. I'll make some calls. Until, you know, right before the gaming is so secretive. Yeah, make some calls. You might be able to tell me. But, yeah, but everything that happens behind the scenes, you know, super yeah. tight-knit and we don't really get told anything. Well, we don't get told anything until we're when you're set, doing you know? When you're doing the motion capture for the game or, the, or when you're voicing the game, do you know? Do you have a script ahead of time? Do you know kind of what is happening? Oh, am I back? Yep. Um, yeah. 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 Obviously, I know. What, I know what my character is, yeah. and and you know what what I'm going to be doing. Yeah. I do. So they're not locking it completely down because I know some sometimes when they when they lock those scripts down, you know, you'll have actors they'll they'll know the scene they're doing, but not how it plays into the overall you know show or yeah. the game. Yeah, you know, I've heard of that happening on on movies, you know, things like Spider-Man and I think some of the yeah. really, really, really big IPs um, where you, you really only find out about what you're shooting on the day. Um, but it, it depends on the production and, and the, you know, the production team, what they're willing to give away and, and I guess how much they need to protect the, you know, the IP like right. before release. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, let me... It, 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 Going along, this is and this is just b b between us. If you know, there's rumors out there that they're working to create a shared Call of Duty universe. Any thoughts on that? Um, what do you mean by shared? Well, I, this, from my understanding, it would be they would have uh, kind of a multiplayer setting where they'll bring in these different characters from different games but they'll be in the same setting oh i don't know that would be yeah cool. i don't know either it's just I, the rumor i have yeah i haven't i guess i haven't played multiplayer enough i don't even know i don't yeah. even know what characters are in multiplayer i just want to get rigs in there i don't even know if he's in there <laughs> you gotta get rigs in there <laughs> yeah. all right i, I think I, I, want rigs, see. I want rigs everywhere <laughs> seems like i have one more i want to i want to make sure i get all his questions in because he'll be He'll be okay. drilling them on me. Okay, this is another one that's a little uh, slightly off topic. So did you play any of the Call of Duty games before this one? I, I voiced a character in Infinite Warfare a few years ago, yep. which that's was right. like a, the space one. And I played about 15 minutes of that. Um, and then I think I got booked on a job or something and, and had to put it down and then hadn't picked it up since. But... I actually want to uh, stream that on Twitch because I think it will be fun. Um, really? And the other, yeah, the, but the other two I've played, I played, um, I completed the campaign on Modern Warfare, the newest Modern Warfare and Cold War that just came out. So I sort of, I started playing them in the lead up to Vanguard coming out. And now I want to go That's back good. and try and play as many of of the old campaigns as possible on stream i think it'll be really fun but i think the next one i'll do will either be world war ii or infinite warfare that's right that's right yeah he he yeah. my son's very excited that they remastered modern War warfare one and two but then they came out and said they weren't going to do three and he was just devastated okay yeah i've, I've yeah i often will get people telling me i've got to play different they've got their favorite you know modern yeah. warfare got their favorite? Diff diff yeah, different iterations of the game. So I'm really, I'm really keen to go back. In I've time got, and, I've got your, uh, your next, out. your next hit for your Twitch. This is tell me right. So it's it's you and me playing together, but it's just random games. We don't awesome. get to choose the games. Sounds it's, like it, a hit. Yeah. Now I can tell you, oh, unless oh. it's an Atari game, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Well, I, I just had to do that actually on um on uh, this organization called Stack Up Org, a charity that helps veterans. Uh, they did it. They had a charity event recently, and they downloaded all these funny little games on PC. And I had to yeah. go up against like proper gamers, and I got destroyed. It was terrible, <laughs> but it was fun. But it was terrible. I don't like. I, yeah, I don't like losing in front of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I, I mean, I back in the day, I could play some Atari. I was good at some of those games, but you know, oh, that you was just when you had the little joystick and a button. That was it. 
Yep, one of the greatest consoles of all time. Yeah. Are you old enough to have played Pong? On the Meg Megnavox or Megnavox or whatever. Yeah, I didn't have the Megnavox. I had this other one. I always forget what it's called, so I just say the Megnavox. But yeah, Dad gave me one when I was super young, like probably three, and he showed me how to wire it into the back of the television. And I was playing. It was the machine that had. It was white, and it had Pong, hockey, tennis, and it was one other game. It was oh, ping nice. pong actually. Yeah, but I think they were all pretty much the same game. It's pretty much the same. Switch game. between yeah. the two. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've been. I've been. I was OG. I was the year that born. I think the year that gaming came out, or the year after. I think games came out in '76. I was born yeah. in '77, and oh, mate, I was straight onto it. Loved it. Yeah, that's pretty great. That's pretty great. I, I think yeah. for me, I was. By the time we got a console, I was probably close to a teenager. By that okay. time. They came out in 76. We probably didn't have one until like 80 or some, somewhere. In okay. There. So I was probably right before being yeah, a team. No. But that was the perfect no. time. It, it, well, it was. We had, you know, what did we have? We had the Game and Watch. We had uh, we had the Atari Commodore 64. The 286 oh. computers came out. And we had the Game Boys, Game Gears. Do you remember that? When we got oh, yeah. in a handheld held console. And I remember driving to Sydney with mum and dad. And finishing uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, it's glorious. When they before Commodore 64 came out, there there was an earlier version. It was called a Vic 20. I don't know if you remember oh. remember those. But we are cleaning out the attic, my brother and I, uh, over at our parents. We found a Vic 20 still in the box, and it still works. Wow. You had to hook it up. Still, it still now. It was terrible. But yeah. still, it was still kind of neat. How fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. even remember playing Joust on the original uh, Apple computers. Yeah. <laughs> With the, it was like two shades of green, light green and dark yeah. green. Yeah. Oh, that's was great. that like 2-bit or something? Yeah, amazing. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there wasn't many bits in that game. <laughs> there wasn't many bits. There wasn't many bits. That's right. So, so I, there's a few things um, that I have seen you in that you're you're a yeah. terrific actor. We need to see more oh, of thank you. you. But but yeah, thank so you. so I got to bring up I got to bring up Zombie Hunter because you were in it with Danny Trio, which was awesome. Really, was really good. wasn't yeah. wasn't that a hoot? <laughs> oh, it, was, it was just a fun movie. Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of I had a lot of fun making that. That was the first film that I. Uh, I think that was my first lead role in the film. Uh, really? My first film in America. Yeah, well, I'd done, before that, I think I'd done a, a film called uh, Forbidden Ground. It was called Battleground in America, um, which was a World War One movie that I shot in Australia. And then I think the following year I did I did Zombie Hunter. I've seen Battleground. Was It, it was called Battleground here, right? Yeah, it was. In, in yeah. America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have seen that movie. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's, yeah, so that, that was my that was my my first one, and then Zombie Hunter was my second one. But I mean, Zombie Hunter was, it, you know, I guess, or it was a throwback kind of eighties uh, grindhouse. Yeah, I was going to say there's kind of a grindhouse movie. Yeah, and you know, I got to play it, a guy called Hunter, and I was wearing a <laughs> you know eighties leather jacket, and I had a sawed off yeah. shotgun and Doc steel cap doc martin boots and he was just cool you know um yeah. and it, it was fun it was very much a tongue-in-cheek cheek kind of a movie and um those usually become cool like cult classics yeah i mean yeah it had a, it had all the components it had a cool poster amazing music yeah. um you know it was just it was a pop cheesy popcorn flick but i i loved it i had such a great time the crew was amazing we shot that in utah actually got to drive an i rock camaro Nice. Um, we flipped it in the end. I didn't flip it, but um, it, yeah, it was that was a great experience. And uh, Trio's awesome, scary. I, uh, He's a scary motherfucker. I, oh my god, <laughs> he uh, he is. Although he can yeah. be hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He's a really, really nice guy. But he just, you know. He's, he's a man who's lived a life and you, you when you're around him you feel it you're like yeah, this guy's legit you know he's he's legit 
He yeah. was, what, I think 69 or 70 at the time when we shot it. Yeah. And he's swinging axes and beating the crap out of stunties. <laughs> amazing. Just amazing. All right. So we're we back. Go. So as much as I'd like to blame that one on Martin, we're back. That, that was on my end. That was on my end. We had a storm roll through. And there we go. Knocked us right out. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martin, thank you so much for taking the time and for being patient. This is this yeah, is uh, this welcome. has been a been a uh, it's it's almost just as hard as as playing you know Call of Duty. It's been a tough one. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I even did a lo- I even one. did a location change in that time. Amazing. <laughs> you got closer to the beach, right? I got closer to the coffee shop. <laughs> oh well, okay, okay. What time is it's it like- in uh, Melbourne? Right? In Melbourne, we are running at eleven a.m. Oh, very good. And I haven't, I, I haven't had my first cup of coffee. So I'm guessing good. it's, let's see, it'd be Wednesday morning, eleven a.m. Wednesday morning. Yes, yeah, eleven a.m. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. So we're still rocking seven. Tuesday, aren't you? Yeah, or seven p.m. Tuesday night. Well, I can tell you right now, the future's looking bright for you. <laughs> 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 All right, Martin. We be, we better wrap up because we we've Let's do it. we we've already got two strikes. We don't want to go for a third. So, but before I let you go, um, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Is you know, do you have anything else upcoming that we can kind of keep an eye out for you in? Just keep an eye out for the Dunes, the film that I wrote and directed. Um, yes. I'm I'm hoping to you know get some kind of a distribution deal in the next month or so. And uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for it. It, it. it will be available to watch, but uh, I'm really excited to share it with everyone. And uh, yeah, that's, yeah, it, it, I, I'm excited yeah. to watch it. And do you want to give us a little bit of the plot? What, what's the dunes about? Well, it's the story of Nicholas Rice, who's a journalist for the LA Times, and he he travels back to his hometown in Australia after the disappearance of the tenant in his rental property. But when he gets back there, a mysterious figure from his past shows up and all hell breaks loose. It's good. It's a thriller. Yep. Thriller. Psychological thriller. It'll scare the person. That sounds great. <laughs> it's great. It, look, it's, it's, it's a bit of fun. It's a, it's a slow burn psychological thriller. So if you're into that sort of thing, yeah. I think um, it would be a movie that people would enjoy. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it. You had a, uh, a good friend of yours was in it as well? Yeah, my buddy uh, Tim Phillips, who's a, yeah. a very dear friend of mine. He plays the main antagonist, um, and he's he's tremendous in it. He did such a fantastic job. So, um, you know, any time that you get to work with friends is a pretty magical experience. Yeah. Oh, that's um, terrific. Yeah, yeah that's so, that's terrific. Yeah. So, okay, so so last thing before before you go, you know, where can we find you on social media? You know, where can we find your uh, Twitch channel? All of that stuff. Yep, everything's just at Martin Copping. So for Insta, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, whatever else is out there, Facebook, I think. Um, no Facebook, TikTok? Yeah, I think it's all at Martin Copping. Yeah, yeah, TikTok, yep. TikTok yeah. at Martin Copping, yep. That's probably I'm jealous of that one. That. I haven't That's, figured that one out yet. Yeah, TikTok's probably my biggest following, so I, I should remember that. Yeah. But I haven't been using it a lot lately, but now that I'm back with Stumpy, now I'm back with Stumpy, the one-legged seagull. Oh, um, I might start making TikTok videos again. Oh, look, here goes all the seagulls. Look at them. They're all flying around. Check them out. Oh, oh pretty man, Stumpy there. comes up. I haven't seen him since February. So you, you probably don't know this, but I've, I made best friends with a one-legged seagull called Stumpy because he's glorious. And uh, and I haven't seen him since February. And I used to bring him a fresh bread roll every single day and I feed him. Um, but the other seagulls, they're all dickheads. We don't want to go near them. But Stumpy's a legend. <laughs> so this is, this could be the, the rekindling of a, a wonderful friendship with, between me and Stumpy. That's right. That's right. Well, next next time uh, you come on, I, w- I want to hear if this, you know, was there – was there a reconnection or, you know, Stumpy moved on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Stumpy did have a girlfriend called Longneck because she had a long neck. Um, so you never know. You never know what's going on. Yeah. But I, I'm pretty sure I'll be po- – oh, there he is. Look, Stumpy with one leg. 
uh, I'm pretty sure that I'll, I'll be posting things on, on TikTok about it. So if anyone wants to follow me at Martin Golfing, Stumpy coming to a cinema near you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Martin for uh, hanging in there through all the uh, difficulties Mate. and uh, definitely you have you to come it. back and we'll give it another go. Mate, sounds great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. So that was the terrific Martin copying. And I apologize that we ran into a few technical difficulties. You know, sometimes when you're operating over Zoom and across countries, that stuff happens. So we had one on his end, we had one on my end. But I, I hope you guys were able to get enough to enjoy that interview because he's such a he's such a fun guy. You know, if, if you watch uh, watch him on Twitch, or if you see some of uh, uh, his movie work, you know, or even just, just from the games, you know, Rainbow Six or uh, Vanguard, just, just a fun guy, just a, just a really good guy and, and a really strong actor. What I didn't get to say to him that I was uh, uh, trying to go through was – that I'd seen him in several things before. We talked about his movie with uh, Danny Trio, but I'd also seen him play Lucky in Hand of God. I've seen him on uh, NCIS. He was uh, Benny, you know, and he was in a movie. I was trying to remember it so I could ask him about it with Sebastian Stan, but I, I remember it now. It's called The Last Measure, and he was just really, really good in that. I think um, really good actor. I know we'll see him in a lot more stuff. Uh, going forward. Can't wait to see the dunes. That sounds terrific. So thank you guys so, so much for hanging in there with me through this one a little bit rougher. You know, we don't normally have that type of technical problems, but it happens on occasion. Uh, but just a, just a terrific uh, interview. And we'll bring Martin back. We'll definitely have him back on. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you hanging in there. If you haven't done so yet, we're still trying to grow our YouTube channel. It's MeisterCon Pod. If you could subscribe, really appreciate that. You can also find, we, we just passed our 300th episode. I posted number 302 today. All of those are on our website, MeisterCon.com. Audio and video. Uh, it's got a, a terrific geeky blog on there from Brett. You can find out if we're doing any in-studio projects or if we're going to any conventions. I know uh, Martin is just starting to do the uh, convention circuit uh, with uh, Call of Duty. So, so I know that, uh, that he'll have a, a terrific time with that. And I, I, I tell you one more that I wanted to ask him about was the red carpet that they rolled out uh, for the premiere of uh, Vanguard, which is something new. I didn't realize that we did uh, gaming premieres. I should have. But my understanding was that uh, T-Pain was uh, hosting and they had – a setup where you could go and, and try out the uh, game, had a lot of celebrity guests. I mean, it just sounded like a, a, a real blast. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Do not take you for granted. Until next time. Bye, everybody.